Episode 008, Secret Societies, Bohemian Grove. Dude, when I was doing the research for this episode, I got fucking frightened, bro. Frightened. I got scared. And who knows, maybe, may, maybe, yeah, I don't know. But, but I got fucking scared in particularly because... All these secret societies are considered like Masonic cult or Masonic brotherhoods and stuff like that. And um, like like um, the 33rd degree Masons, like the, like the Freemasons, actually, like they believe in a bunch of crazy stuff. And this is what this is. And I'll, I'll explain what all this means. And they believe in all this weird ass shit, basically like kind of like... Um, affirmations and stuff like this numerology numerology and all this fucking stuff and as i was doing research in this stuff i was like holy shit like there is so oh i just got fucking mind blown you know we'll we'll just get into it we'll just get into it but there's no intro for this one the way that i want to lead this dialogue is we're not going to necessarily we're going to just talk about what the fuck bohemian grove is and shit like that but I want to make a foundation for the for this secret society series so we can really understand like the meaning behind both their fucking cults and what they're trying to do and to do that we have to grab our uh, we have to we have to get ourselves familiarized with the terms of numerology um uh sacred geometry this fucking affirmations type of shit and so that's going to be the first phase of that's going to be the first phase of the conversation just getting familiarized with what all these things are and how they use them and then we're going to talk about bohemian grove and finally we're going to come to a conclusion of why the fuck these fucking why these elites want to make these organizations should i be worried for my life you know maybe what m- m- maybe dude that was that was my exact thought when when we're doing research for this dude in particularly to what our conclusion is going to be at the end of this episode i have i'm gonna show you something that a famous president said warning us about secret societies and and i don't think maybe we'll i don't think we'll get clapped on this one maybe once we get into other other secret societies because Bohemian Grove has been exposed for sure. They've been exposed for ten, you know, for a a lot of years years now. They've been exposed for a lot of years. A lot of people have a lot of content around Bohemian Grove, which is why I'm not necessarily gonna dive it specifically into details and shit like that. It's just an overview of Bohemian Grove, but I am gonna dive into the meanings around these societies and and what what they use these things for. But who knows? Maybe that that was literally my exact thought. I was like, "Fuck, man, are we gonna get killed talking about this stuff?" There is who knows there's a possibility. Nah, we probably give a warning first. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. <laughs> All right, let's get this kicked off, bro. So, again, three phases: the foundation building blocks of what these secret societies use. Um, second phase is Bohemian Grove, and the third phase will be our conclusion. So, all of these secret societies, um, again, are Masonic brotherhoods, and in these things we can find, we can find numerology, the the divinit the divinatory arts, the paranormal, astrology, sacred ge- and sacred geometry, as well as alchemy. And I'm going to explain what all these things are, but all the but in generalities, what these things are is basically applied sciences applied sciences that haven't really been proven so for example you've heard of affirmations right Mm -hmm. you know saying something out loud wanting it so much that it actually ends up happening in real life that is a form that fits into this into these categories and stuff like that as well as as well as uh like the paranormal paranormal is considered to be not real ghost you can't necessarily prove that there's ghost which that's a entire conversation in its in itself but the paranormal is basically just another dimension 
And apparently there's a way that with using all of these things, that other dimension can, can influence our current reality as well. And, and all that stuff, as well as the foresight, like accessing these dimensions and stuff like this, you have some people can get the ability and see the past, the present and the future. And we're going to get into that stuff too. But this is what these, these societies use. They use different things, some satanic, others, others just interested in what these sciences that have no, what can you say, that they don't really have, like, they haven't really been proven. But it's going to be, it's, it's going to be a crazy one, dude. Um, so we can trace back Western numerology back to Pythagoras. Name sound familiar? No. The, it's the guy that invented the Pythagorean theorem to, uh, now it for, does. <laughs> to figure out the triangles. And that that is the well-established version of what numerology is. Um, then you even have older ones with the Babylonians. Numerology goes back to the Babylonians. And then the oldest reference that I believe we have is with the Indian Vedas. Now, the Vedas is going to have its own podcast. I don't episode. know about the Vedas. The Vedas, well, honestly, don't learn about it because I want to fucking shock you. That okay. Those texts are, are sacred texts from the from from the indians and dude it's some crazy fucking shit but but pythagoras developed the the most cohesive system which all these secret societies use and what numerology is can also be referred to um arithmancy and it is the belief in a occult divine or mystical relationship between a number and one or more coinciding events so understand it in two parts one is the study of numbers and then two is the relationship to basically its existence and and i'll give you a, an example a little bit later let me just go through what these are but just keep that in mind it's basically what a number means and its relationship to the physical world like you can use numbers to influence the physical world like that like that stuff that I I always see these I always see people pull uh fucking even tattooing themselves like seven 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 yes uh, mm -hmm. four 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 uh but like I also heard a thing where if if you see that number a lot like oh like oh it's seven seven p.m. or it's seven oh seven and you know like people are like oh that's my number they kind of yes uh have it they kind of give themselves a how do i explain it yeah like like lucky number seven yeah if you see number seven in the casino oh shit you're about to hit something it's it's luck that it's 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 relation the number seven's relationship is with being lucky for sure and it it's exactly it yes and understanding what numerology and what these numbers mean is one thing and then applying that is can influence the physical world so saying that numbers have meaning is kind of not true correct because it's just a number you know one stick plus two sticks equals two sticks you give me or plus another plus one stick plus one stick equals two sticks and we just see it as that but the meaning that these numbers have applying that to the physical world you can these these the belief in this you can alter your life essentially like the there's i can't remember what the number was but there's a number that's associated with with like profit and money and stuff like that if you sell your product if you have a product and if you sell the product with that certain number so for example eight dollars and whatever that that number that's associated with profit and money you in theory will get more sales and that's what numerology basically is 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 the study of numbers and what they mean and then its relationship to the physical world what you attach that number to you can alter your life in, in in regard to that sense all that shit kind of gives me fucking chills because numerology is pretty scary to me mm -hmm. uh not in the sense of numbers but in the sense of what the numbers can mean and what you're you know basically what you're explaining into it and then also um ah fuck bro it's just fucking like you saying this stuff it just like oh it's fucking crazy how coincidence and numbers are also like what 
uh, for all, for obviously, you know, me being a football fan. So uh, I'm going to give you a quick story. Mm-hmm. So back in 20, let's just say 2010 to whatever, this guy, it was a, it was Barcelona versus Real Madrid, and uh, Messi was on the field and Ronaldo was on the field. And this guy runs out there. He runs out there and on this weird little day. I can't remember. I don't remember. He runs out there with the fucking a shirt with Qatar 2022. And and Ronaldo just brushes him. And then, like, Messi was just hugs him or something like that. Now, I'm not saying that that's why he won the World Cup. But, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it, stuff yes. like that that just pop, pops up or uh, him December 18th. Bro, it goes down a deep ass rabbit hole. Like back, uh, so I, I do not have this. I was not prepared for this, so I do not have this at the top of my head. I'm just saying stupid shit. But uh, there was a video of Maradona, uh, like with his number and saying this date, and then uh, it's it's a very it's a collage. I wish I could. I, I might while you're talking, I might be able to find it. But uh, and then and then also with Messi and then Lionel Scaloni the dates that they like debut and all this stuff and it adds to december 18 2022 and it's fucking that's, weird i'm like that's numerology fuck? yes that's numerology so in that way yes. that's why i get not afraid but it's just like dude this shit is fucking pretty crazy and there's no way that's a coincidence and we can go back to we can go back to a lot yeah. of shit that i've that you and i have talked about you know uh with numbers and and you know mm-hmm. our cousin with like kobe bryant and yeah and 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 lebron james and all this weird yes. shit where i'm like okay this is it's no, there's no way this is a coincidence now correct and again like what is numerology it's the study of number and one or more coinciding events understanding this and applying this to the physical world you can alter different things and you can get certain outcomes desired outcomes and it's nothing proven it's on the conspiracy side but it's there it's out in the open it's it's literally in in your in your it's literally in your face all this stuff and what you just said about that stuff that's exactly yeah numerology um is this the same thing of uh applying like the hebrew language to to numbers too or no is this a little bit different yeah so Oh my goodness! Because I've looked into that. I was just looking into it, and, I, and it was, um, it was fascinating what meanings mean in Hebrew, and it's almost, uh, kind of frightening. It's almost like what, what? Yeah, it's. Hmm, I I don't have the information. I can't I can't come up with it on the fly, but but it's just one some it's yes, just one something yes. that I just wanted to yeah you know talk about but yeah not we, we kind of got a little sidetrack <laughs> yeah. here but this is, that was a, but that was a great i'm glad you brought that story up because yes that is that was mm, numerology perfect. yes now numerology is of course tied with sacred geometry uh the divinatory arts and paranormal and astrology now the divinatory arts is the understanding or gaining the knowledge of the past present and future so it's basically forcing being able to um, access the past or being access certain memories from the past, knowing your surroundings, the present, and then being able to tell the future. Um, paranormal is denotating is yeah denotating events or phenomena that are beyond the scope of normal scientific understanding. So such as ghost, um, yeah, just phenomena. Yep, so, yep, yeah, that. paranormal activity. Yep. And astrology is the study of movements in relate and relative positions of celestial bodies interpreted as having an influence on human affairs and the natural world. So, yes, horoscopes is astrology and stuff like that. Now, some people believe in horoscopes. Other people don't. However, it's important to note I that. Don't. But it's important to note that everything is connected. Before we come in flesh, before humans were a thing, before this planet was even a thing, back in the Big Bang, we were all part of a collective, we're part of collective celestial energy. Well, we, that's, that's we, what... we have star stuff in our, in our systems. We're all made of the same things. And we are all somehow or way connected to everything, to all of our surroundings, including the, including the cosmos. Which is 
it's uh you know where you can tell that a lot is when uh, a lot of these reels pop up about like uh um you know common things that men do or common things that women do and then like there and then people are in the com or like common things that parents do common thing that and everyone in the comments is like Bro, I swear we have the same parent. Bro, I swear we have this, and it's. Yeah. I feel like it almost that. That's kind of what. That's kind of aligned together. Like, bro, we're it all is. we're all connected. We're all the same. Yeah, and a lot of the things, a lot of the like people that read their horoscopes, it's it's a lot of the times it's it's really accurate, and and um and I refer back to to like the 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 law of con the conservation of laws in our in our what episode four was it the exoplanets and black holes nothing yes. nothing nothing can be destroyed when when we die mm -hmm. we we can't be destroyed yes we, yes you know we we cease to live life in our physical form but our bodies can't be destroyed our souls the energy we have energy in our body that can't be destroyed it can only be transferred where do we go we go back with the earth we go our energy goes back to to the cosmos i don't know but we're all connected in in that sense and in the same sense that you that you brought up as well which now thinking about it does that mean that reincarnation is real that that we reincarnate into something else because we can never be destroyed yes and no yes and no yeah. Yes, I think yes and no. It's but it's crazy to think about. It has nothing to do with what we're going to talk about, but it's it does it does beg the question for sure. Um, sacred ge and then we have sacred geometry. Fuck me, dude. We can literally make a fucking podcast just on each of these topics and what they truly are, and we can go into rabbit holes. Sacred geometry is amongst one of the craziest fucking things that that there is and sacred geometry ascribes symbolic and sacred meanings to certain geometric shapes and certain geometric proportions it is associated with the belief of a divine creator of the universal geometer so the belief that a god created the universe according to a geometric plan has ancient origins and this is the reason why this is the reason why why i'm still attached to the belief that there is possibly a god or a creator we've gone over over all of our podcasts is that you know you know i have a broken belief system or or, uh, or or faith and stuff like that this is what attaches me to the possibility of god hmm. sacred geometry because the proportions and the numerology and the symbolic meanings of everything it's of like an intelligent design like if you would create something it's it, sacred geometry and numerology refers back to like the the what's called the the perfect man from da vinci that he drew our proportions oh, the, that are proportion me yeah that our proportions are perfect it translates across all animals pigs dog delilah um flowers they all have geo they all have a specific amount of, of of petals they all have a specific amount of everything and this isn't, you can trace this down from the smallest thing, from a fucking Higgs boson, all the way to the biggest thing, to a galaxy, to our universe. Everything has geometric proportions. Everything is in accordance to sacred geometry and, and a number law system that, that we, if we access to this, we can literally create whatever we want. We can literally create a path and then follow it and then everything just falls into place fucking crazy like it's same thing with with the with uh, the golden ratio have you seen that spiral thing and everything fits into that category mm -hmm. fuck up fuck let me see if i can pop it up real quick uh sacred geometry oh um do you remember actually you might have because we went to the same um elementary school did you remember going outside in the winter going outside in the winter and um, when it was snowing and you take a black piece of paper and the snow petals fall on it and then you take you take pictures of that and then you can oh, see what the yeah, snowflake looked yeah, like. It. Yeah. Do you remember how a snowflake, no two snowflakes are the same. They all have 
a different specific pattern that will never ever be created mm-hmm. again. Well, I guess back to the, that uh, that podcast about uh, explains the black holes. If you wait long enough, it will happen again. Yeah, yep, and yep, yep. our universe is infinite. So there's probably fucking Pedro and Moses having a podcast somewhere out there in the world. That's <laughs> fucking crazy, dude. Holy shit. Well, snowflakes fit that same thing. It's sacred. They're sacred geometric. They're sacred geometric um, um, figures. That's sacred geometry. That it, it follows a specific measurement. You get me? Yeah. And from the smallest thing from a snowflake to the biggest thing in the universe, they all follow this thing. That so, so that's a good example. The other thing was was uh this spiral, the Famonichi. This is where some of these cults as above, so below, that satanic meaning that that whatever imp- what at the highest level that there is it reflects it at the lowest level that there is. That that's what that meaning means. As above, so below. Like it's related to um to Baal or or Satan because he was in heaven in the highest area and now he's in hell and it reflects the same mm. thing. Dude, this is fucking crazy shit. We gotta make a fucking podcast about this shit. Um the sign of the cross. It's at heaven and earth. That's that's why the cross, that's why it has so much meaning. Even Jesus the way he died has such a symbolic meaning, the cross, where heaven and earth meet. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus, it was in heaven, or sorry, Jesus was part of heaven through his father, God. And then, and then he walked, and then he walked this earth, and then he died on the cross that symbolizes that. And then he went back to heaven. And then, the, and then you have the flower of life. The, 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 this, this geometric pattern that flowers have dude it's some crazy fu- and then you have the fucking pyramid dude then you have the star of david dude i'm telling you this is some crazy sacred geometry is some crazy shit and there's actually um randall carlson is a part of a team that is that is trying to study these sacred geometry shapes to access uh atmospheric another dimension that you're able to pull energy from this is part of the things that tesla nikola tesla was also working on making free energy energy from somewhere there's it's it's a theory that there's energy all around us which there is there is and that with through accessing it through these sacred geometric plans you can access that energy and technically have an infinite free energy that patent that tesla was working on got bought and then scrapped because mm-hmm. you can't put a meter on it and it goes back to the corruption and the greed and money and money and all this fucking shit but they're actually um rebuilding certain things like that and this time instead of keeping it a secret it's out in the open for everybody to, for everybody to create because that's truly the way that that you can make something like this if everybody has the information you can't suppress it Holy shit, dude. It's some crazy shit for sure. Um, now, the, the ancient origins of this sacred geometry um, goes back to Plato when Plutarch attributed that belief to him writing that writing. Plato said that God ge- geometrizes. And I think that was in the Convalium Dis... I don't know, some shit like that in a book. And then... More recently, a, a a mathematician by the name of Carl Frederick s- applied that same quote, saying that God arithmetizes, or that there's that God uses a specific plan to create life. And this, this, these, these meanings is very um, have highly influenced within these Masonic organizations. And then I'm. Um, Plutarch is a Greek philosopher and a historian. Among other things, Plato was also a very uh, famous philosopher. And then one of his more popular theories is that the physical world is not really the real world. This world that we're living here is not really the real one. Instead, ultimate reality exists beyond our physical world. It's something, uh, it's a divine energy, something, yeah, something like that. And um, 
And of course, Plato's cosmology was essential to the alchemical worldview. That's the alchemy that I, I mentioned. And alchemy is the practice is the practice of using spirituality or some sort of science to transform one matter into another. The most uh, famous example of alchemy is turning lead into gold. Have, have you ever heard of that? Mm -mm. Yeah, it's uh, it's it, that's alchemy, turning one physical matter to another, which is the belief that we're, it's because we're all made of the same thing. This table is no different than 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 what our body is made out of. And if you can manipulate that matter, you can in, essentially transform anything into whatever you oh, want. Oh, actually, I think I have uh, uh, like with diamonds. I heard that if you the diamond, like actual diamonds that we get, they're not even as real as making them off of coal. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. And once you put them in Under extreme pressure, pressure, it will create a diamond. And that actually is a real diamond compared to a real diamond. I think, yeah, uh, there I think JRE, he, he talks about it. Yeah. In, in, yeah. In yeah. His, we, we now make lab grown diamonds. Yeah. And, and that's actually more real than the actual real diamond, which is, kind of crazy yeah about. it's um the only reason we can tell whether it's a lab grown diamond or a natural diamond is because a lab grown diamond is more perfect yeah oh than, that's what it, that's probably what it is than a naturally grown diamond yeah now do you have any questions about that 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 bulk of information that i just told you is what these organizations are around of and why do they want these things is because these organizations want to want to have a specific view and through these practices they they can, ex they, they, they can execute on whatever their okay. views are yeah that's where i was kind of confused i was like are we getting too too off topic but i was like you know what let me just reframe my uh my question and then maybe at the end you'll give me yeah. what this is about yeah so, okay i, I will now that is more of the um the sciences those are the the, the sciences of the foundation and there's a there's another part to it. It's which is symbolism. And what is symbolism? Well, the use of a symbol to represent ideas or qualities. Um, and you can see it as a stop sign. A stop sign is a symbol. It's a symbol to stop. But what we're looking at is what the symbols have ties with, um, and how the symbols are used with the characteristics of numerology and the occult. Occult again, meaning supernatural, mystical, or magical beliefs. Um, and I'll give you the okay. So now I'll give you the example of what symbols and symbolism is, and you can imply symbols through uh, physical or through something that you can see, or you can imply the symbolic meaning of something, something that you can't see, but it's sim it's symbolically related. You get me? Yeah, yeah. I'll give you an example now with how all of these things tie together, and and. So one example is the number three. Now, number three is referred to as the perfect number by Pythagoras. Again, um, the, the guy that created the more stabilized um, practice of numerology. So number three is referred to as a perfect number. And, and, it has both an actual meaning and a symbolic meaning, such as in the Bible. The number three signifies the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And what does God give? God gives birth, life, and death. What does God offer? Um, he offers equilibrium within the body, soul, and the spirit. What did Jesus, the son of God, say he was. He said he was the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning, the middle, and the end. Number three is the number of the divine. And when numerolo numerology and symbology are used as a, co as a cohesive unit, it's something to be reckoned. Christianity is one of the, is one of the most powerfulest religion in the world. You know, from, the, from, from when the Knight Templars were around, from the Crusades to now, it's one of the most practice religion and through symbology and implied numerology it's fucking crazy so that's the example that all everything that we went over how everything just goes as a cohesive unit now i'll refer to as so that's just numerology and symbology now the father the son and the holy spirit what does that make it makes a triangle sacred geometry 
it all ties together which a triangle um which a triangle is the building blocks of the universe that's what it is in sacred geometry well, a it's triangle, the, a triangle is a circle a triangle is a circle yeah like if in, you, infinite triangles yeah. is a circle I think something like that. I saw at the at the trip to infinity. Like if you put triangles so many times, it will create. I don't, I could be fucking just talking on my. Now, thought. a triangle. Now, what is a circle? Circle is the never-ending cycle of life and death. It's said that God's first thought was a circle. It's it has no edges. It's fucking crazy. And when you, this is why I'm saying that. That's the only the, this. The understanding of this is the only thing that ties me to that there is a creator out there is because, again, that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, it makes a triangle. And what's it often depicted as a fucking circle? Like, it's all a unit. Everything is tied together. Dude, am I sounding crazy? Uh, No, but I just feel like... um, I really feel like... Are we supposed to know, know this? Uh, I, I'm saying, like, is that of God's, you know, because sometimes, you know, following the faith of God and all that stuff, is, it requires some type of ignorance and not questioning it. And it goes back to, you know, you know, early mm-hmm. books of the Bible and why, I'm, why me, why this, and, bro, like, just fucking do it, and stuff like that. So, like, is that why, you know, you get what I'm trying to go with? Like, yes. why are we trying to, mm-hmm. is it, is it really, should we know about this why don't we just play it how you know now of course we should know about this uh you know anything that you can influence your life in a, in a positive way yes for sure and in the conspiracy world of a, of a new world of a new world order and that conspiracy world we're we have too much things going on that suppresses our knowledge from understanding from understanding all of this this is why uh, i'm not sure if you've seen i'm not sure there was something that 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 was going on that I that I read. There's an article that I read that the most powerful weapon that has ever been deployed on the human was our phones, was our social media. Everybody is consumed by it now. That's the most oh, you got, dangerous you, you, weapon. Uh, you ran into the app or to that ad. They're like, uh, it just uh, it's a white. It starts white and then it just hits you in the brain and then it blah blah blah. Yeah. Is that is that is a nice I, little video? I, I don't know where I got it from. I don't it's know where a nice I got little video. From. I think it's a nice little video, and uh, I saw that and I was like, "Fuck, it's true." Yes, and all this information that we're getting flooded with and fucking mind, mindlessly, mindlessly scrolling through through news feeds and, and and TikTok and Instagram and all this shit that keeps us distracted from understanding, from gaining our purpose. And, and I think like uh, um, one of the things that ties back to i i'm glad i listened to yuval that philosopher he says that uh books are anecdotes or sorry actually that this might have even been jeff bezos books are anecdotes to to um to what's called to short spam or mm. to short attention spam mm. they're anecdotes to short sense att- uh, attention spans so you know with that I, it's funny that i mean you look at everything and everyone in short attention spans exists. And I'm like, mm-hmm. dude, what the fuck, bro? Like, I still, I love, that's why I think podcasts are too. You listen to a podcast, oh, this is two hours long. That's long. Well, I mean, you you just put it up and then you just work out or do something or like just wash the dishes. That's better than, you know, so yeah. Yeah, I get, I, you I get me? what you yeah. Yes, I do. Now, now, and we just spent a long ass time on, on this stuff and this podcast about Bohemian Grove, but that's what I want. That I wanted to understand for everybody that's listening to this to understand what practices these organizations mm-hmm. use. I think um, that's that's a very good fun, uh, fundamental thing about it because sometimes you just want to learn about Bohemian Grove, and luckily I'll put a chapter if you just want to listen about Bohemian Grove. Yeah. But but the fundamentals of this yes and, is important because. It's just why it's the why. Yeah, and these characteristics of or this foundation translates across all secret societies or most secret societies, of course. And again, not not all of these secret societies are are 
satanic or bad. You know, some just are just more focused on on the sciences of, of these different mm-hmm. things or what these things could mean. And others are fucked up, like Bohemian Grove, which Bohemian Grove uh, supposedly is 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 a, a club. It's just a fucking club for elites. But we're going to pick it apart. And again, it's BM, Bohemian Grove has already been exposed. And we're not going to go into the depth of every member and stuff like that because there's t- that's a fucking rabbit hole by itself. And there's actually already... <laughs> a lot of good content out on YouTube um, about just the rabbit hole that Bohemian Grove uh, is. We're just going to look at it from the outside because of that same reason. For sure. And so Bohemian Grove is the name that's associated with the cult when the scandal when the scandal occurred exposing their satanic like worship of an owl god. And Bohemian Grove is the location of a 2,700 acre lot for a private campground for a gentleman's club called the Bohemian Club. That's that's what the, it acts, that's what the club is, the Bohemian Club, which was established, which was well established in the 18 in 1872. They have two locations, a private city house in San Francisco and then the Bohemian Grove private retreat north of the city in Sonoma County. So, and they have a website too. <laughs> Where they, they, they do, I actually might have it right here. Yeah, do uh, have, you, have you seen? Have you seen? Uh, it just popped up on. It was kind of weird that it popped up on my on my uh, feed. But have you seen that? There's this kid or guy that uh-huh. just uh, <laughs> there's a kid and a guy that they, that they just snuck in there and he went through the whole thing and showed the whole or most of the whole thing. Oh, I have not seen that. You no. haven't? No, I have not. I'm gonna send it to you. Do you have a? Or I might just clip it and then send it to you. Yeah. That way it's probably. But um but he goes into the owl and you know the owl is hollow? The owl is hollow. Oh, it's hollow? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so you haven't seen this then. No, I have not. Ha. Ah, okay. Keep talking about it and what and then I'll I'll find it. Okay. So we're going to pick apart again, there's very good content on YouTube about the rabbit holes, but we're just going to pick it apart from the outside. So the club's mascot is an owl and their motto is weaving spiders come not here. Fucking fringe. Um, they, they got that phrase from uh, a Shakespeare uh, screenplay or some shit like that. Now, Bohemian club members are restricted to men only, um, but over the course of the club's history, women were allowed to join. However, it's unclear if it was just an invite if the invite was temporarily or permanent membership was permitted for them. Bohemian club members, however, are the high class elite. It's they have elite high class members. How elite you say? Well, United States presidents are a part of this association or have been a part of this association. Now their members list are of course private. However, if you look it up on Wikipedia and other sources, you can find you can find members that in the from from the past, or you can find the scapegoat list. Yeah, correct. <laughs> or you can find the scapegoat list. Um, now, again, it's American presidents. Some of them before elections, of course, before they they run for their presidency. But it's politicians, real estate moguls, high quality or high ranking military officials, artists, music musicians, and fucking much more, bro. But Again, there's their members have power, wealth, and influence. Ties back to numerology and how all this shit goes goes together. And through power, wealth, and influence, what do you get? You you can you can execute your visions yeah. through power, wealth, yep. and influence. And this this Bohemian club, Bohemian fucking cult, they their front is like it's just a gentleman's club for the arts for the arts and and um and entertainment and like this is what they what they implement across everything like everything that comes up they're, they're like oh we just like we just like the arts we just like the arts and then that is their excuse for why they do they their fucking satanic shit mm. is oh it's it's just an art it's just a screen you know we're just we're just we're just shooting shit we're just having fun um yeah. Oh, 
Uh, notable presidents are Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan were honorary members, as well as Clint Eastwood, Henry Kissing, uh, Kissinger, Charles Schwab, and fucking more, dude. It's, it's a rabbit hole. I actually have a picture of um, Ronald Reagan and Nixon. That's right here. Sorry, it's a small picture. Now, this is um, a picture of Harvey Hancock standing and speaking to a group of the Bohemian Club members at the Owl's Nest Camp in Bohemian Grove over breakfast on July 23rd, 1967. And in attendance, you can see Ronald Reagan and Nixon next to the speaker it's, at the Bohemian Grove. <laughs> you think it was different back then and now, now it all changed? I mean, it could be... It could have been like a gentleman's club, honestly. It, it could have been just like a kind of like a golf golf clubs and stuff. It, it surprises me how when I look into like getting into golf and getting a club, like some are invite only. Literally, you have to have a you know have to, you have to be rich, and some are, you know, you got to pay a membership of fucking a hundred thousand a year or something, you know, or even less. But it could have been that, um, you know. Yes, that is a hundred percent a possibility. It definitely could be that. However, in in everything, it's all about context and what is used and how things are applied. Everything's about context, which just looking at it, just looking at this organization from the face of it, from its front that it puts up, you can you can understand so much about it again because of its context. Now, yes, that is a hundred a hundred percent a possibility though. Maybe we're just fucking. Maybe every every content about Bohemian Grove saying that it's a call. Maybe we're just all fucking stupid. Now, although that could be a possibility, it's a cult. Now, and it's not a conspiracy. There is footage out there. There's content everywhere that this organization um, does fucking satanic shit. And of course, there's more characteristics of what a cult and their leader and what defines them as a cult and all this stuff and and it's all up to the interpreter because what if i told you hey pedro let's go let's go to um let's go to this gothic place that we're going to listen to a speaker that wears robes and headdresses and he's going to offer us blood and body and he's going to there's going to be smoke with fire and all that what if i told you what does that sound like to you some satanic shit man <laughs> yeah well i was just cherry picking and describing okay. sunday mass you you see it's all about the interpreters so a cult <laughs> Sunday mass yeah that's how the priest oh shit <laughs> I, I I first listened to that analogy on the Joe Rogan experience and it's you can the cult it's it, what defines a cult it's all up to the interpreter mm. however it's very important this part is very important it's the difference between a cult and religions is the historical value and the truths that are associated with them okay now that was just an example i Truly, do not mean to offend um, the cla the Catholicism uh, that organization. It was just an example, but it's all about the interpretations. But what the, what separates them is their historical truths and values, which we know that the Bible has immense truths in the and his and real things that the real events that happened. Now, you're probably like Moises. Why the fuck are you fucking just bringing up the Bible through Jesus and all this stuff? Well, I'm bringing this up because of their symbol which is the owl that owl is associated to Moloch and Moloch is a pagan deity that the Canaanites worshipped back when the Jews fought them when they were trying to obtain their promised land mm -hmm. this is this is how far this ties back and Moloch even has associations with Baal the the fucking bull fucking satanic creature Ah, uh, uh, I can't remember the name, but yeah, yeah, ball. So, some oh, that's what yes, some scholars associate it's not the, the Bathmate or something. It's not that. Uh, that's a different. That's may, maybe different. that's a different one, but but some scholars associate that 
Moloch and Baal are the, are two of the same, which that pagan deity refers back to um back to the times of Exodus when Moses was out on Mount Sinai and the people temporarily lost faith in God and they were worshiping they're worshiping uh, this yeah. bull idol. So this is why I keep bringing the biblical some biblical context to this story is because of where this satanic deity comes from. Now, the owl. The owl symbolizes inner wisdom, change, transformation, intuitive development, good luck, and self-actualizations. Some societies, however, consider the owl to be an omen of death. And when we're speaking about all these things, I understand that different things have different meanings and and they can have the same meaning. However, what the questions that you just asked, everything about this society is about context, is how they use For these sure. things and what they believe in all these things. Now, in the Bible, the owls are associated with desolation, emptiness, loneliness, and destruction, particularly in the prophecy of the destruction of Babylon by the prophet Jer Jeremiah. Uh, and you can find this in Jeremiah 50. Now, this Moloch or, or Baal was actually a deity that the Babylonians were worshiping at the time of their destruction. Now, what is the symbol tied to? It's tied to that Moloch, um, Moloch or, or Baal. And the fucked up shit about it is that this, this deity, the way you bring reverence to this deity is by sacrifice is by child sacrifices given to that deity to to in order to achieve a desired outcome so it's a child fucking sacrifices fucking demonic fucking shit again in order to to receive a desired outcome is that desired outcome pro is it is it is that desired out outcome promised like are you for sure gonna get it or it's uh just you don't know. That's what this they, organization believes. Huh. That's what the Canaanites believe. That's what the Babylonians believe. That's why they offered it to child sacrifices. And actually, that's also why um, in the Mesoamerican cultures, yeah. the Aztecs and all these other indigenous cultures, that's what they did too. They they did Sacrifice human sacrifices people. in yeah. order to appease the gods. Whether oh, was man. it for harvest or wanting rain and stuff like that, they did uh human sacrificials same thing in um the peruan cultures the the, indig the indigenous people i think there was a site that i seen there was a site that had like two thousand two thousand human bones or separate people it was just a graveyard that but it was a known sacrificial spot mm -hmm. sacrifices are crazy i mean I don't ever want to sacrifice somebody for something. Is it that, are you at peace? Are you, is that just a belief? Uh, since you believe it and you know that it's, you're doing it something for a greater good, does it, does that excuse that, you know? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Now, that, that, that's, this is why I'm saying that it's, it's all about, it's all about the context. I sent you those those videos from Bohemian. You want me to pump them up? Or the, the one on Instagram is short, but the other one is like the full. I, I'm gonna probably. All what's right. it called? Just, can you just plug them in? Yeah. Or you want me to show it? No, it, it doesn't matter. All right. But they won't get no sound. Okay, so this can be found in Bohemian Grove. This is what there's again. That's what their the owl deity is associated with. And we know that because we have footage of them uh, doing these satanic rituals and using a prop as a that looks like a child, as and they throw it into the fire. Now, now, let's break down their logo. So we know what the owl symbolizes and what they use it for because. Again, context is everything. Now, the bell, the bell is associated with uh, a. It, it's symbolic for a general bond for its members. It secures everything on the inside, so the secrets that they use are not leaked to the public. 
Now, even the color blue, even the color blue um, has some meaning in which, again, that's from that. That's from their website. Uh, blue in the business world makes you feel like you're in an open space. I, it, like if you're free um, out in nature, the sky, the water. Now, but blue has, um, it also represents trust, loyalty, wisdom, and faith. And then their model, weaving spiders come not here. This motto implies that <laughs> outside concerns and business deals are to be left outside. And this is ironic because it could be said that these organizations are the, are the weaving spiders. They're the ones pulling the strings in this analogy. The, 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 they're the ones pulling the webs. Now, interesting choice of words because do you remember what we called, well, actually, the internet? And then when we were younger, what we called the internet, the World Wide Web? WWW. It's, it's all... It's all symbol it's all implied symbolic representation that these weaving spiders uh, what does a weaving spider create it creates a web the world wide web the internet it's all things that can be tied together maybe i'm just i think it was blue too <laughs> maybe i just went on a rabbit hole and i'm fucking all jacked up on all this information but it's very interesting but again how can all of these things be a coincidence no. Let me um let me pop this up. Hold on. This is a recording of them. That was a le that this was the leaked footage of them fucking worship stream worshiping Moloch. That's that's more like the our deity that you can find that but which is hard of You can see the figure right there too. And what they do is they make a fire in front of it and they make this this little prop that resembles a child mm -hmm. and they throw it in the fire. Which is, is it an actual child? No, it's a oh, well, just uh, who knows? But it's just, uh, it's just, they just use that as a prop, I think. Was that the footage the uh, Alex Jones mm -hmm. uh, exposed? Yes, it is. Wasn't he the first one that exposed on that shit? He was. Is this the first one exposed or is, because Bohemian Grove is, uh, Bohemian Grove is like very popular. Is it, you know, I'm guessing... It is because it got exposed, right? Correct. So I mean, not, I guess it's not that secret I guess, society anymore. I guess was the was the KKK kind of like a cult wise too? Because they almost yeah. did something like that, but there was more. That is also a like cult, yeah. Hatred yes. shit, you know. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that is uh, also a cult. Now, and all these, all all these. Um, fucking organizations they're all considered frater uh, fraternal organizations and the freemasons which they will also get a podcast uh they're actually the oldest secret organization that we know of and the earliest mention of them was published in the 1390s in the 1390s of these secret societies and which I is didn't know that yeah it's long as time ago Holy yeah, shit. and all these guys they they wear um uh like robes or dresses uh black, red and silver is the color of their robes and shit. But that's some crazy shit, bro. Yeah. Now 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 the end game or our conclusion. Now the conclusion the conclusion for this is is uh we go into the the conspiracy of the new world order and what this is and although it might sound like 
like a, a kook conspiracy and stuff like that, I truly do believe, make no fucking mistake about it, that there is somebody pulling the strings. Like how fucked up our world is today is evidence that that all this shit is run by a, an organization that's like why the fuck is why the fuck is big pharma attached to big food corp and then attached to big farming corporations and then why is it that in particular here in the united states some of our foods that we have here are banned in other areas from the very same companies from very i think um there's some chocolates that don't have the same ingredients as sold in other areas and those ingredients are the very same ingredients that fuck our bodies up and the very same people that make these things are the very same people that are giving us the medicine for it too it's all a fucking this is this is why i'm saying that the new world order truly is a thing now whether it's just one organization or it's just people trying to profit profiteer I don't know, but that is what I I'm think the conclusion is. I hope people are just trying to profit, you know? Let me... um, Because WHO as well, um, the World Economic Forum, the, those crazy videos, speaking of the future, it's like, fuck, bro. I Hopefully, they're just trying to like make money off of this, but hopefully, they're not trying to run everything. Because mm -hmm. before, I, I honestly didn't care for a, uh, like a, not a world government, but like, all the world working together because you know in order to advance in science and technology and all this stuff it the best way to do it is by working together you know mm -hmm. and but when you they might try to imply that so that way we can get a world over you know a world government but a world government is not the way to go no i mean there should be you know people that think this people that think that there should be conflicts and i feel like a world order is like we're gonna do whatever the fuck we want yeah um there shouldn't necessarily be conflicts but there should be oppo op opposing views and why why it's because the new world order is a conspiracy theory but why it's not is because because let, let me let me listen to this this is from and I mentioned this earlier, but this is from JF Kennedy. JF Kennedy was oh, the very shit. popular pre know, president that went against it. And he made a very popular speech speaking about this. And I, I fast forward it. I fast forward it, but take a listen. To the press and to the president. Two requirements that may seem almost contradictory in tone, but which must be reconciled and fulfilled if we are to meet this national peril. I refer first to the need for far greater public information, and second, to the need for far greater official secrecy. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society, and we are as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the... That was pretty much the gist of it. You can find this at the jfklibrary.org. They have the full audio. Well, they have an audio bit that's about twenty minutes, and then you can find this also on, on YouTube. But JFK, you should clip, you should clip that video of it. Uh, the video on it was just his face. Oh, okay. that, that's that's why I just uh, I'll put just the put, audio. I just put a face in. Now, why is JF Kennedy possibly one of one of the most progressive presidents that we've ever had in this nation? Why? Is he scared of secret societies? Well, there's been two presidents in the past. Around this time, um, Bohemian Grove was already established. Of course, Bohemian Grove got two presidents. Maybe they tried reaching out to this one. The rabbit hole says that Obama was part of uh, Bohemian Grove, but JFK understood. I'm sure. I'm sure he he did get briefed by one of these people. If they have access to presidents, how the f why the fuck is a president? 
going to Bohemian Grove, a fucking cult organization. Mm -hmm. And there's two, Nixon and and Ronald Reagan. Um, why was a president scared of secret organizations for this very same reason that they could be they could be the one pulling the strings? And then JFK, one of our greatest president, he got fucking clapped in what is a fucking conspiracy <laughs> theory. Which that and it's oh my goodness, it's so th this is this is why, and the whole speech talks about different stuff, but in particular this section was the dangers of secret society, secret oaths, as per his own words. But I don't know. Oh, so. Why the fuck are we even talking about this and all this stuff? I guess, I guess it is um, a good conversation to just bring it to the intention of, of anybody that listens to this, to just stay aware, be aware of your surroundings, be aware of what happens out in the world, be aware of me personally. I fucking hate politics because it makes me unhappy. It, it truly makes me unhappy just fucking seeing how fucked up belief systems and all this shit and mm -hmm. the shit that happens out in the world how it inflicts of the stuff so it politics to me it makes me unhappy but still stay aware of your surroundings stay aware of of the implications of things and what just be prepared stay aware and be prepared well not only that but stay aware of the truth though it you can stay aware of a lot of things but stay aware from the truth I mean, we seen it with in 2020, how so many people were submissive to the idea that to the frightening idea of maybe you were going to cause that your neighbor or your family member that you love to die. And then three years later, you know, light shot light shines up on it. And it's like. It, 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 I almost feel like it was a test. I'm not no conspiracy. I'm not against any of, you know, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to say it, but I'm not against none of that because some people did need it and all this stuff. But all you had to do is just stay fucking healthy. That's just it. Stay healthy and eat real food. And it's, it, I've, it, and the truth, just staying the truth, propaganda machines literally do exist. And uh, they really want to, like you said, the probably the worst the best device that or the worst device you can depends how you use it is your phone because you can you know algorithms and you can can you know get all this all this information and and sometimes when wars break out you're you know just always remember that there elon musk has said it there's no angels in wars mm -hmm. there's, there's not a good or a bad side there's no angels in war bro yeah it's... It, it you know unless no there's just none so you know and 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 i understand that it's hard for some other some people are different than other people and you and running off with your running with your feelings is not is is not ever gonna be the way you have to look at it from a realistic point of view and, and analyze and context anal as well and analyze all the contacts understand the past to just be inf informative you mm -hmm. know and educate yourself and not just oh all these people are doing it all these people are doing it might as well you know let me fucking be a follower why mm -hmm. be a follower you know so yeah you know a uh yeah it's just i feel like being a follower it gives you some type of um not saying that being a follower is bad but you know, sometimes you have to, you know, speaking up is, is not bad. And it just gives you some affirmation of people. Oh, you know what? If I do this, people are going to like me more or, you know. Yeah, fuck that. Um, <laughs> dude, make no mistake about it. The new world order is a thing. Um, actually, well, I, I think JFK assassination is going to be a story that we're going to cover. But or talk about. Sorry, just dialogue. Um, but. When he came into office, or when he was already in office, the world was so fucked up because of um, the um, co communism and all this shit. Mm -hmm. And the CIA was operating as an individual organization. And JFK was opposed to that. JFK wanted to shut down the CIA. And often these organizations, 
I don't know if they're a part of the New World Order, but they just operate by themselves. And I don't, I'm not sure if you've seen... Oh, you know what? There's a story. Um, there's a story on going around social media right now that this this kid bought a fuck a fuck ton of junk computers because he likes he likes ma- ma- uh, yeah. ma- making these computers. I have seen this story. And on one of those computers was the distribution of child pornography. And FBI caught on to him. They took him to court. They went into a litigation battle. Turns out that computer was, was from it? the yep. FBI. Yep. In the FBI, there was child pornography going around. And That's you're fucking disgusting. Bro. You're going to fucking, fucking tell disgusting. me. And why the fuck is it even in the FBI? On one of their computers is a bunch of fucking rubbish. And then that is the fucking question. And then you have that. And then you have the CIA during the JFK's time. They were operating by themselves. They were so fucking, which ties back to the, to the, uh, the military industrial complex. It, that organization in and itself the fuck is ridiculous. They were just operating by themselves. They wanted to invade Cuba. They wanted to go in there and create a war. It wasn't until JFK went in there and was like, you guys, there's a whole movie about this situation. Yeah. It wasn't until JFK went in there and put a stop to to um, to them operating as a rogue unit, and which is probably the jfk was our savior he was the reason why we didn't go into war with the soviets or with with communism and, all, and cuba and all this fucking shit and he spoke about the dangers about these organizations and if i'm not mistaken he wanted to abolish the cia which as we know the cia it's they're co-ops the co-ops happen all over the world and they're crazy fucking stories 13 hours in benghazi there's a great movie about the, it was a psyops that we were not supposed to be there mm-hmm. and our guys were there and and there was a loss of life of unnecessary and nobody knew about it until it was going on. And and he, JFK wanted to abolish these organizations and maybe that is what got him killed. This is why the conspiracy of the JFK assassination is so prominent and why we should have a distrust to our government. The government lies to us in our face. Could it be through the strings of this new world order? They lie to us in their face and then they ask us to trust them. This is what this all conversation just the the this is what the i guess message is if we can see that the dangers of these secret societies and the implications that they use and to just stay aware of your surroundings you know be prepared for anything that can happen yeah uh eisenhower has a good uh speech about or uh eisenhower first of all has yeah, a good you, speech about um the in, military, about industri- military yeah. industrial complex and then i can't remember who has a good speech about um about what was I gonna say about like uh government to to be uh, never or uh, if what's it called he it might have been wrong like I could be wrong but he's like always long story it was basically like never trust there's two things you never trust is help from the government and something else I you know. oh that was probably uh Ronald Reagan yeah. Ronald Reagan was uh very um he was his presidency was known to have a limited government. Um, which that's basically what you find. You have um, Republicans, Republicans, and Democrats. Um, you have um, uh, Democrats are for a bigger government. Republicans are for a smaller government. Which on the topic, I'm glad you brought it up. In ah fuck, I did not write this down. But the Freemasons, um, back 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 in the fucking day, they actually instigated the very first third party in our political system. And it was uh, something against Freemasonry. The political party was literally something against the Freemasons because uh, of the implication that this secret society was was the dangers that it could imply. Back in the... You know what? Let me pop it up real quick. Uh, I hope I had it. I thought I had it. Yeah, I can't remember. I'm gonna try to see oh, that. yes, look. Uh, the, this is actually on history.com. Freemasons inspired America's first political third party. In the realm of politics, the first third party in the United States, the Anti Masonic Party, formed in 1828 in response to fears that the group was growing too secretive and powerful. Many of its members touted conspiracy theories about the Freemasons, with some leaders claiming that an infamous murder 
of the time had occurred at the hands of the Masons, an effort to keep the victim from revealing the organization's secret. Sound like JFK assassination to me, uh, of, of history repeating itself. So these secret societies inspired America's first political third party. And people want to act like the New World Order is just a conspiracy theory. Yeah. I don't know. All this stuff is, is pretty crazy. What well, the one one of the most recent ones that uh got me like, bro, you, people are so fucking global. You guys are dumb. Uh I think I told you about that. Um the Osama bin Laden's uh letter to America why he did nine eleven uh went around TikTok and like all these this is why I trash that fucking app. I trash that app for the same reason. Um that all these people were like, you know what? Uh, you know, maybe oh, like they were siding with oh, with Osama. I'm like, all these people, all these people, and it was, it was later removed and whatnot. But like the damage was already done. All these people were like, I'm like, bro, you live in a, the greatest country in the world, America, and you're gonna say this shit? Like, uh, it, it it was one of those things that irritated me, and I was like, see, this is exactly why when people buying everything like do you you know there's a lot of things that sometimes i buy right away and i'm like you know what i'm starting with this and i'm like whoa, whoa 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 chill the fuck out bro you just seen this like an hour ago and you do, seen do it if you really care about this educate yourself on this this thing listen to people listen to people that live in that whether country or whether that place and then you have you know and settle down and have a say but yeah yeah, I think misinformation is one of the biggest problems here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the other thing, 100% misinformation is a big thing. And again, the context of the situations and stories. Um, another thing is, you know, I wasn't going to bring this up, but something that we hear a lot is um, there's an event that happened here in Iowa recently where they put a uh, altar in our Iowa State Capitol building of ball or uh, it, it's ball. this it's this bull it's this bull deity and the Bathame. Bathame. and Something the like the con again the context of it these satanic uh, deities that are associated with child sacrifices and stuff like that the context and then the it, it made headlines all over the world and all over social media and stuff like that and the comments that I was seeing was, oh, it's funny when when conservatives talk about free speech, but it implies to only their free speech. Conservatives only want to have their free speech, but they don't want to let other people have their free speeches. And uh, I, he was a politician, wasn't he? The one that uh, took it down. Took it down. Yeah, he fucking. Yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was a politician. He did, I think he fucked it up, too. Like, And this politician was... Uh, I believe he was a, he was a Christian and it didn't sit well with him, of course, um, because it was satanic and in the Bible, it, um, it, it, you know, of course, yeah, these forces yeah. contradict each other and both sides have a right to their conversations. Yeah. Free speech. Of course, this is America, the greatest country in the world. Let's have free speech. This guy, you know, he, he impulse, he acted out of anger. But what has been a a something that we've been bringing up on this conversation, context. What is the context of the story? It's a satanic demon. It's evil. It's not good. It's bad for its evil. Okay, let's have context. The same people that were having this freedom of speech um, comment, I was going on their, I was just, I was like, all right, let, let me see who the fuck is fucking saying these things. I, I went on their uh, social media accounts. Bah. These are the very same people that are, that are, um, that are supporting, um, that, that, that want to support Palestine because of all the kids that are um, being killed out there. Mm -hmm. And man, that, that's another thing that just breaks my, it just fucking breaks my heart seeing all this, the, the child yeah, suffering yep, out there yep. and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that one side's right or wrong, but the very same people are, are supporting Palestine because of all the child suffering, but yet they want to make 
this comment that everybody has a free speech and this satanic deity that's associated with child sacrifices and child sacrifices sacrifices were offered to us back in the time so these things contradict us and it's all about context yes freedom of speech it, we should have it that's ironic but not but it's ironic yes Holy but not shit. for evil evil should not exist it's the very same reason why we went to war to we had two great wars because this because the nazis point of view is evil what they did was evil this is why we went to war for that stuff it's the same thing with communism communism is not good that's why we also went to war with that in vietnam Jeez. it's all about the context and it's ironic so whenever you make comments like that, and i'm we're we're all guilty of mistakes we're all guilty of of we all especially when we were kids we all have you know guilty of mistakes but have context have what the things is and it's so ironic that 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 is and why it shouldn't be allowed because it is evil and yeah. there is a war with between good and evil going on in everybody's in everybody's hearts right now too which but it, it just ties into to your story about context yeah yeah it's i'm telling you i used to be fucking ignorant like that that's honestly once i see shit like that i'm like it's almost like you guys are ignorant bro like it I, bro there was one time uh I, like i said i don't want to go into that it's a, maybe that's for something else or if, you know the public wants to hear but like this this person was posting you know stuff for like palestine and you know for the kids and everything and then um something was brought up with or I, I brought up like hamas in some way like so you know like and then they didn't even know who hamas was <laughs> you know it's like what So it's like, I'm not saying I'm with Israel or Palestine or none of that stuff. Like, it's just like, they didn't even know who Hamas was. We were, yeah. you know, is the because I was like, oh, I was like, you know, because I, I, I like to learn people's point of view. So I was just trying to learn, hey, uh, so this is where you stand. I want to have your point. Of view. And I like to do that with everything. I don't really want to be like, oh, yeah, this is what I believe in because I don't I don't live there. I don't live there. I that's not. You know, I, I, I feel like I can't have a say until, you know, but we were talking about all this stuff. And then I was like, you yeah, know, how about, what do you think about Omos? And then, you know, cause there's some people that like, they're like, I've heard a lot of journalists from Palestine that they, they side with, they're like, who cares about Omos? And I'm like, what? And then, uh, just on the Lex Friedman and I've been, I've been trying to study this. Why I bring this up is I've been trying to like study this and comprehend, uh, whether one side, both sides, you know, uh, comprehend obviously the people that live there. And I asked this person, I'm like, what do you think about Hamas? And they're like, what's, what's Hamas? I'm like, he's like, oh, I'm just posing it because I feel bad for like the kids. And I'm like, I understand that. But what? <laughs> it makes yeah, no sense. It made no sense. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta know the whole story about anything about anything really but sorry about that fucking went on a little sidetracked but that's that's all i got for today's topic cool all right guys well intellects out again stay aware be aware and be prepared intellects out thank you guys